Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 19 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this episode, we'll take a look at the rhythmic and slicing flex modes in Logic. If you haven't seen episode 18 yet, I highly recommend you go watch that first because I do an overview of flex time uh, as well as cover the polyphonic and monophonic modes. The rhythmic and slicing modes are really useful for percussive and drum type instruments. So I've got some live drums here. Let's see what they sound like. All right, so those weren't too bad. Um, you can hear that some of the downbeats are a little off, uh, especially like where the cymbal crashes are. They're he's just playing a little ahead of the beat, and that's pretty typical of drummers, but overall, he's pretty close to being um, right in the grid, so we shouldn't have to do too much to this to, um, to time correct it. So since we're dealing with live drums, we have to make sure that the material stays phase locked. You know, we can't edit each track individually. We have to edit them as a group. Um, so the way we're going to do this is open up the mixer, uh, select all of the drum tracks, and then we are going to assign all six of them to an edit group. And so you click on the group tab here, go to group one, um, and then click on it again, go to open group settings. And then I'm just going to double click and rename this group drums. And then just make sure that these two options are on the editing and then phase locked audio. Make sure that those two options are on so that when we flex time one of them, we'll be flex timing all of them. And if you missed the episode where we talked about group editing, that was uh, episode 14. So you might want to go check that out first. Okay, now that we set these up in a group, we just need to turn on flex time by clicking here. And then uh, what we're going to do is choose a flex mode for one of these tracks, and it'll actually analyze all of them uh, to the same flex mode. And I'm going to use rhythmic uh, for right now. So what Logic's gonna do is it's going to analyze each track in the group. And after the analysis is done, we can see all of our transient markers here, just like we saw in the previous video. And if I move one of the markers, it'll actually move all of the markers in the group to keep all of our tracks phase locked. Unfortunately, there is an issue with the rhythmic mode that causes some phase issues that we'll come back to in just a moment. So if we grab one of our markers here and move it, you'll see that it doesn't just uh, stretch that one track, it stretches all of the tracks in the group. So that's basically how group editing works for flex time. But the cool thing is that we can also quantize these uh, tracks uh, just like we did in the previous video. The difference is that when you quantize one of them, you're actually quantizing all six of them because they're in a group. So I'm just gonna go to my region parameters choose quant uh, go to the quantize menu and I'm going to quantize to an eighth note and what it's going to do is all six tracks will be uh, simultaneously quantized to an eighth note grid. So let's hear what this sounds like. Yeah, that was the phase issue I was talking about. Uh, those flangy, phasey sounds that you were hearing, especially in the cymbals, uh, was for whatever reason caused by the, the rhythmic algorithm. Um, so my way to get around this is to switch to slicing uh, instead of rhythmic. So let's, let's see what this sounds like. So I don't want you to think that rhythmic is completely useless 
Um, it does a really good job of preserving the transients uh, in percussive material better so than the monophonic or polyphonic modes. It's just that when you try to use it in a group, it doesn't work out so well for you. So if you're dealing with just one track and you're working in rhythmic, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, the way uh, slicing works is a little different than rhythmic. Instead of, um, uh, well, unlike monophonic, polyphonic, and rhythmic, instead of stretching the material or compressing the material, it actually just chops up the material for you and then just fills in the gaps in between the slices. So slicing really truly is the best algorithm to use for percussion and drum instruments, especially in a group here because the, the phase issues between the tracks are minimized. Also, it's even pretty good for like guitar and bass if there's a lot of gaps between the notes and chords you're playing. Um, it's not very good for vocals, though. You'll find that it makes uh, the words sound really choppy and weird sounding. So try out slicing on most of your standard instruments. If slicing doesn't work for you, uh, then try maybe polyphonic or monophonic. The last thing I want to show you in this video is just a quick little trick that you can do with drum loops and flex time. As we already know, uh, flex time uh, senses the transients in an audio recording and allows you to edit those transients. You can actually also slice up a recording at the transients. So what you can do is uh, find just a drum loop here. I'm just going to use one of these club dance beats. And we're going to slice it up into a bunch of smaller pieces. So let's listen to what this sounds like. All right, so let me just turn my metronome off, and then I'm gonna turn flex time on, just like we did before, and I'm going to choose the slicing algorithm. And what it does is it senses all the transients in the loop, just like it would with any other recording. What you can do is you can right click at the top of the region, and there's three options at the top of the menu. Two of them, the top two, reset uh, flex markers. So one is the ones that you created manually, and then reset all will reset any flex marker that's there, even ones produced from quantization. The third option is the one that we want to use for this example. It's slice at transient markers. What this does is it cuts up the region into smaller pieces based on the position of the transient markers. So now what we can do is we can actually lift uh, maybe just a sample or a piece of a song or a loop to use in our own uh, piece of music. So here we have a kick drum and we could use that in our own song, maybe uh, duplicate it, maybe drop it into a sampler. So this just allows us to pull a piece out of a loop and reuse that and recycle that part of the loop in our own piece of music. And we're doing it more creatively than simply just dragging and dropping the loop into the song. We can reorder the loop into a different sequence. We could drop it into a sampler, like I said before, build our own instrument out of it, maybe take a piece of another person's song, of course, with permission, and you know maybe resample it into something that's a little more creative than simply just dragging and dropping the loop into your song. In the next episode, we'll take a look at the speed and tempophone modes, and I'll show you how you can uh, use those to create some special effects in your music. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.